Welcome to Skull Tolbol in Georgia. Today we're going to be talking about photographing uh, interior spaces but with foliage and how to maintain good results uh, on a wet and windy day like today um, throughout our scene. So what I mean is capturing the shots uh, and making sure that there's no movement within those trees. Let's do this. So here we are in a partly disused sanatorium in Skaltolbo. Now if anyone doesn't, wants to know why it's partly disused, then check out the card above. Um, it's a link to my video all about the town of Skaltolbo and the IDPs that are based here in the town. I shot this all the way back in 2018, but it's a highly informative video with plenty of context as to what this town is about. Okay, so back on to today, we're going to be looking to shoot this courtyard of the sanatorium. and. For me, it's a really easy shot in terms of compositions and what I want to line up. But it's quite a windy day and I don't want to capture any of these leaves moving in the wind. I want to maintain high quality image throughout in my final result. Okay, so I'm shooting my first three brackets. I'm, I'm shooting at f9, sharpest point on this particular lens that I'm using, which is my 16 to 35. I've got three brackets that I've just photographed. They are two stops apart. The brightest one is one stop of light over zero. I'm in manual mode, okay? When I look at the results here on the back of the camera, of course, the darkest exposures look absolutely fine, but they're very dark shadows. If I then look at my, one of my brighter exposures, the one that would be needed to pull out some of this foreground detail, when I zoom in in there now, We've got movement within the leaves, um, quite a lot of movement actually, especially down here. We've got some down on the left hand side and of course this is all very much um, in the realms of uh, not being usable. Okay, so now we have a choice. What are we going to do next? Well, we could um, use one of our darker exposures and bring up the shadows in post-processing and combine that with the other two to get the, the, the leaves looking right. However, when you're doing that, you're boosting it up, say, two stops of light. You're not maybe getting the best out of, particularly for me, this 5DSR. It's going to be a little bit of noise in there, sort of artificial noise. It's better to use the camera's built-in ISO, boost it, and then use that and blend the parts of the scene that have got the movement. That way, you're limiting kind of what damage is being done to your final result. So what I'm going to do here, um, all the settings are exactly the same. I'm not going to touch them at all. So we're still in... F9 as I was. Uh, my three brackets have not been touched, but if I now boost my ISO up, if I double it to 200, and then we just bring the shutter speed back so we've got our brightest exposure back to being one stop over, it reduces us down to a third of a second, which is still not quick enough. So let's do a bit more of an ISO boost. Let's go to 400. Same again, reduce your shutter speed down to try and get the uh, the shutter speed a bit quicker. Now our brightest exposure is an eighth of a second. So again, probably not quite in the realms of where we need it. So let's do one more boost. Let's double it again to 800, and then we'll bring our shutter speed down, and now we've got a 60th of a second. If you don't want to boost it any further, the ISO, you don't have to. You could actually just reduce your aperture at this point. Bring it down to say f7.1 or 6.3, and then get it to, then your fastest shutter speed is going to be around about 125th of a second in this scene, which uh, by my mind is actually pretty good. So if I need to reduce this further, I've got two options here. What I could do is lower my f stop down, and I could go, say, for example, to 6.3. That now gives me a 15th of a second, but I might have to do two uh, brackets, two exposures, one for the foreground and one for the back there to then have two options to actually lay a mask into our final result. It really depends on how deep your scene is. If you've got a deep scene like I have here, probably gonna need to do two. I could even reduce my f-stop a bit further if I still can't get static trees, if I still can't get movement in here that is nice and clean. Let me check it now. I've got, a fifth, I've got 25th of a second f5.6, but of course, 
that's not sharp enough to go right through this scene. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is focus on the foreground, capture that shot, ISO 400. Perfect. I'm going to check it. Everything is sharp and still in, in, the, in the foreground of the shot, which is where I'm looking at just for this bracket. Then, I'm going to move my focus point up to the top left-hand corner, which is where there's a whole load of foliage and like, some bushes and stuff. I'm just going to reduce my shutter speed um, a little bit more, so I'm still maintaining my exposure balance. So I'm just basically dead on zero on my exposure bar. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot that bracket. Now, there is a man in the shot, but that doesn't actually matter. For me here, I'm only focusing on those trees. I've already got my main shot, remember. Let me check that. Yeah, when we move in, when we focus in now on all of the details, all of the trees, they are perfectly still and sharp. Okay, so we've captured everything we need here on location. So let's jump into post-processing using a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop to blend all of this together for our final result. So we're in Adobe Lightroom and I've got three brackets. So we've got here, we have here, uh, and we have this one here. These brackets here are, are straight out of the camera and they're kind of like, you know, they look okay from a distance when we're looking at them here. The, this one here is too bright, we don't need this unless we wanted to pull in any of these details down the bottom. But for me, this file would be okay and you'd think it's okay to use. However, if you zoom on down into these sections here, you're gonna see there's lots of movement. And you can see that here quite clearly, as well as plastic bags, which is delightful. Um, but all the way throughout this file, there's probably movement. Uh, there's movement here, look, lots of movement here. Uh, and as we go up, there's probably going to be more movement in this section, um, throughout the file, basically. The, all of these trees are moving. There's even some here, look. And as you're going to go through, you're going to notice lots of stuff moving. And for me, uh, here as well, look, on the left-hand side. So lots of movement and it kind of looks okay but that's kind of how you want to shoot this f8 not really a problem low iso although i do think i did iso 100 in the field i don't remember being iso 50 so i must have made a mistake there but excuse that you get the kind of rough idea here um 17 mil f8 0.5 seconds now we can probably use this file not an issue option number one would be of course to blend those together and combine them you can do that here in, in lightroom and if you did that this is what you're going to get. You're going to get basically exactly the same file. Um, this is the blended version of F9, so not really any different. Um, if, in fact, the seconds is one eighth of a second again, so it's the same really uh, as the F8 file. Um, but when you've blended them together, um, it's awful, to be honest. You've got so much movement. If you zoom in on here, you can see there's all this horrible movement. It looks very mean. It's not really nice. You know, there's lots of horrible artifacts going on it's not a nice file Look, all this movement uh, again down on the bottom right hand corner here there's going to be loads of movement and it's just a, not a very nice combined file you zoom out and you don't notice it of course but i always recommend you zoom in on in on your images to check all of the details now let's get rid of that because obviously it is awful the final thing we've got here is i'm going to remove that and the final thing i've got is my two shots iso 400 17 mil f5.6 1 25th of a second and also 1 50th of a second now it's not a huge improvement but you'll notice down here throughout the image it's much much sharper now you've got a number of ways to combine these together of course um, once that finally loads you can see here we've got more iso but we don't have any movement in those leaves uh, as you come up through this file you'll see there's no movement no movement. Now, nice and easy. Why is there two? Well, you'll remember F5.6, I've got different focus points here. I've got the foreground and the background. So I think you'll find here, the foreground is probably sharper on this particular one because I started in the foreground. So we've got basically a focus stacked version of this. And then we've basically got another version yeah, here. Look how sharp it is here. So then we've got another version. So we've got two ways of attacking this really. We could either use, well, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this to start with because we don't, we don't need them. So let's get rid of those. So we've got two ways of doing this. We could use this as our base file. Nice low ISO. You know, no grain in here at all, but we do have movement. And we could blend 
both of these on top of this one. Or we might not need to. We might just need to be able to blend these two together and actually have enough depth of field throughout at 5.6 to combine it and, and make a nice overall file. It's a kind of trading off act, a, a balancing act between high ISO, bearing in mind I'm on a 5DSR and 400 isn't exactly amazing, but it probably is in your camera, or we can blend it together if we need to with some of this file. Now the first thing I want to do is just bring up this exposure a tiny bit in this file. It's actually already minus one look. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to bring it down to here. I'm going to just reduce this. And I'm going to pull the shadows up. What happens if we just want to combine these then? We've got an option where we could use this and we want to combine it with the best of these. So I think the best of these are unfortunately going to be both. So let's grab all three of these first of all. So we're going to grab them, we're going to go edit in, and we're going to go layers in Photoshop. That's going to open all three as layers. Here we are in Photoshop and all the layers have stacked up here nice and neatly. The first thing you'll notice is this is the file that was our background. So I'm going to rename this as background um, F8 because that's what it is. It's the F8 background shot. I'm going to move it here by dragging it to the bottom. Then we've got two more files. We've got this one and we've got the one underneath it. So we've got 9.3 and 9.4. Now, it's really difficult to know which parts of each, both of these images are in focus because you're just looking at it on a screen and you can zoom on in, you can check around. It's hard to know. What we need to do though, first of all, is we need to blend these together. The first thing that I'm going to do is press Shift and click both of them and go to Edit and align the layers. I'm going to do that with them all selected first of all. I'm going to align all three layers. Make sure we've got it all aligned. So let's press OK. Now when you open them as layers here in Photoshop, it should do this automatically, align them in. But I like to just double check, maybe do this two or three times if they're not lining up properly, and then just go from there. There we go. And it doesn't look like much has changed because like I said, it should have it should already have been lined up. I'll just check those. It looks absolutely fine. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure these are both tick tick by using the eye icon here. Turn this one off. I'm going to unselect this one. So I'm going to just basically select these top two. The only difference I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go to edit and auto blend layers. I'm going to make sure that stacked images is on and seamless tones and colors and press OK. Now what I'm basically doing here is focus stacking the F5.6 versions and I have to do that because we haven't got the depth of field here available in either one to just use one. If it was a shorter scene or maybe you do different type of photography then potentially you don't need to do this um, but for an overgrown location like this and when we've reduced the f-stop right down um, what we need to do is make sure we focus stack those parts of the layer. So that's what I've done. Photoshop has chosen the, this part of this file and this part of the top one. And you can see that's exactly what I mean. You can do this in two to make sure, and that's only from experience, to make sure you could capture a third focus stack here. You could capture one that's, you know, uh, focus a third of the way into the scene or halfway into the scene and make three images or maybe four if you're really uncomfortable with it. But for me, I knew that this depth of field at this focal distance was going to give me two files, one for the top left hand corner and one for the bottom right. And so I need to merge those two. That's what we'll have done there. So now this one, F5.6, so I'm just going to blend that, but it's F5.6 stacked, okay? So that does mean it's sharp in the bottom right and sharp at the top left, and we're going to put the background on. We're just going to check if there's any di distance between them. There's a little bit of color shift between them. So I'm going to open Camera Raw, and I'm just going to bring the exposure down on this one to make it a little bit more even with the background F8 one, just to make sure it's just, you know, get it a little bit closer to what it is at the moment. Okay, so that's opened here. You can see it sounds a little bit overexposed, so I'm just gonna reduce that first thing. Reduce the exposure, but clarity. I'm gonna reduce this down a bit more. I'm gonna just make sure that it's exposed a bit neater. Press okay again. It's not a lot in it, as you can see. We're, we're close now. In fact, so close that I don't think it's going to matter overall. I'd say the bottom one, if anything, needs to be a bit more contrasty. Um, if we're really worried, we could go in and could adapt this one. But for me, I think it's going to work fine. So the next thing we need to do is we need to just 
put a layer mask onto this. Now the first thing is to make it black, so this is layer mask, it's white is reveal, and that's revealing everything underneath. You know, control I on a PC, and that gives us, basically we can now only see uh, what is basically underneath. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a white brush right here, and I'm gonna blend in the bits that we're worried about. And we're gonna make sure that we've got a nice big brush, a little bit of soft edges, on here, I'm going to make sure the hardness is set to zero. I'm going to make sure this is about 1500 pixels, the brush. And I'm going to blend in here. I'm going to paint in the trees, the foliage, and only the foliage. Nothing else, nothing around it. It won't matter if you go a little bit over because we've got the image underneath. I'm going to do that with these bushes down here. And that's that. I'm going to do the top, top bushes, the overgrown foliage at the top, the trees. Same with these trees. I'm gonna increase this to 100% just to check those trees are done properly. Same here. Don't need to be any less. I'm gonna do the bush at the back. I'm gonna zoom right in now because I just wanna make sure that I'm doing things nice and neatly. You should always zoom in. I didn't, I was getting a bit lazy. Reduce my brush size. Go over all of this. Over all of the little bits of foliage. Anything that doesn't look sharp all of these bushes here, any bits of movement, and the same here at the back. Same issue applies all the way through the image. You can see it increasing in sharpness as I'm going over this with a brush. You can literally see it picking up all of the detail and getting the sharpness back because of course, because it was shot at 5.6, we've got lots more shutter speed and that enables me to capture everything as we wish uh, nice and sharp where we want it i mean this is extreme but you know if you're printing this you want things to look really neat really nice and tidy make sure all these ones are done as well all at the top don't miss any out we're also getting more detail there on the back wall because obviously we focus stacked and even at f8 that is quite high and it's probably not perfect so again there look at all of those coming into focus and that's it. I'm going to basically just go over all of this, make sure these are all done. I'll zoom in and out, check all the details. And other than that, for today, I think we're basically done. I think we can zoom back out. My mask is now saying to me, these parts of this have been done, these parts haven't. And when we blend it, right click, flatten that image. Perfect. File, save. And that's going to send us a nice copy back to Lightroom to start our real edits. I hope you've taken something away from that tutorial. It's nice and quick and easy, isn't it? It's not too hard to blend things together. And of course, it makes much better results than leaving those trees all blurry. Now, this was actually a video uh, recommended by subscribers to this channel. And if you've got an idea for a video, if there's something that I've maybe missed in the past or something you want to know, leave it in the comments section below and I'll ensure to get out in the field and record that video for you. And of course, I'll come back to you in those comments. So that wraps up everything for today. Um, maybe you've enjoyed this video, well, perhaps you can share it with a friend. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're notified next time I upload a video. And the best way you can support me at the moment, because it's been a couple of weeks since I uploaded a video due to damage in my hand, the best way you can support me is by hitting, tickling that like button. Until next time, bye bye for now.